Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back again. And uh, today I'm going to work on a reel that was part of those bargain finds that were previewed uh, last uh, week. This one is a Daiwa reel. It's lost its badge. That's not unusual. Uh, this is a Daiwa 27H. It's an old school reel. It's probably 20 or 30 years old. It, um, it's very much like the Pen 310, which is behind me here. A little bit smaller in diameter, but that same rugged build, the same uh, type of line guide that wraps over to the top post, that uh, graphite frame, and uh, high gearing and the like. I don't normally fish level wind reels, but if I was to fish one, it would be the Styua 27H. I just like the, the that sea line series. I'm a big fan of the 50H. I think it was one of the best reels ever made. And uh, the level wine version of the 50 would have been the 47H. And this is a smaller profile one. It's suitable for uh, inshore fishing, for ocean, for jigging. It's got a nice, uh, nice speed to it. And this one's just tight and it's dirty. So we're going to do this in two stages. I'm going to show you how to disassemble this reel. Then I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. And then I'm going to use... Um, a lot of different tools to clean this thing up and then when we come back we'll show you how to rebuild this reel get it out there fishing again but like they say this one's got good bones it's working and as long as all the pieces and parts are working you're in good uh, stead you'll from time to time have issues if you have a reel that doesn't work because parts are hard to come by and I've seen a lot of these wind up in parts bins because you can't get the nut that holds the handle on weird but that's kind of the way it goes. So I'm going to start by taking off the external pieces. I'm going to start by removing the handle and then the gear side plate and the like. And while I'm doing that and while you're watching, I want to thank our first responders who were on the scene helping us all to try and combat this uh, horrible uh, coronavirus and uh, putting their lives on the line every day. I'm thanking all the first responders, all of the essential personnel, all of the uh, folks involved in making sure that our supply lines stay in good stead, that we are able to get all the things we need to continue to, to live life, if not normal, at least live life. And I do appreciate everything it is that you have been doing along the way. I'm looking, I'm thinking I'm missing a uh, C-clip here. There is an indentation and groove. I'm going to go pull the schematic for that uh, in a bit, but I don't believe that, yeah, that, that that should have a C-clip on there, and it doesn't. So we'll make sure we get one of those as we go to uh, reinstall. All right, so I've taken off the handle nut. Now I'll take off the handle. Then there's a little spring washer behind that. That prevents the um, drag adjuster from uh, locking on to the handle if you back it off too much. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to back that off. And as I mentioned, you should have a schematic that will give you the, the blowout on the uh, pieces and parts. It will show you a pictorial representation of where each piece is, what the orientations are, and how it uh, belongs in assembly. There's a couple of different things going on here. I have no idea why this one is all the way out. That's the spool tensioner that should be in, and perhaps that's part of the problem. But the spool is still turning when it's tightened down fully, so we'll see. And you have this little sleeve uh, that goes over it. And that's the external pieces from this side. Next, we have three side plate screws. And we have four bridge screws. We'll leave the bridge screws on for now. Let's go ahead. Now, I went ahead and soaked this with WD-40. It's a penetrating oil um, just because of the age of it. And in this case, with that um, trim ring, you can generally get some stuff behind there and loosen it. I get concerned when I see the green corrosion on these. It's an older reel. Uh, it's one that's obviously been put in a parts bin uh, somewhere. So uh, you, you need to be careful. And uh, being careful includes uh, wetting down these screws with a uh, penetrating oil just to make sure that you don't snap them. And here's an example of what happens to these screws. So this screw appears to have been in a salt water reel. We had corrosion on the outside, and you can see the accumulated stuff, whatever that stuff is, salt or, or what have you, 
and if that gets too accumulated inside here it's going to snap off if it snaps off you need a new frame okay so one down two to go this one loosened up nicely and this one you can see the penetrating oil got a little bit better so uh, it seems to dissolve some of the stuff that was on the threads on that one one more and that top screw is always going to take the most because that's where the line is coming in and the, the water is getting pulled off of it. And this one, kind of like the first one, it had a, a sort of a half and a half. But use that penetrating oil if you're going to work on a project that you think you're going to have the risk of snapping a screw. Alright, let's take the side plate off then. It should just pull off. The case on this side is nice. I'm just looking quickly at it. We have the clicker and the, the trim ring. All the teeth are on the idler gear. We saw this working properly before. We do see that it's got quite a bit of, of grease and grime and grunk. I'm not even going to take anything more off of this. I'm just going to put this into an ultrasonic cleaner as it is. And hopefully that will free up a lot of the uh, accumulated junk. And then I'll come back and I'll do uh, frame cleaning. We'll, we'll get these bars out of here. This will just pull out. We'll take this side plate off and uh, uh, we'll make sure that it gets nice and clean and representative. Okay, so here's our spool then. That spool should pull out. And then this is very much the same setup as the 50H. So all the stuff that's going on here relative to the level line system is being driven off the back of the spool. So there's nothing different here uh, than there is on the, uh, the standard non-level line wheel. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I like this reel so much. It's just a very strong, well-made, over-engineered over type of a reel. All right, I'm going to start this. Before I remove the bridge screws, I'm going to start uh, by taking off the uh, anti-reverse spring here. Just because I don't want it to shoot. I'm just going to let that lay. It's hooked up top here on the bridge. And then let's go around to the other side. And again, I did the same thing here. I uh, loaded that up and sprayed it down with the penetrating oil. We'll take these out. Now normally, or not normally, but some manufacturers choose to put fully threaded screws and partially threaded screws on the bridge. Fully threaded screws would be uh, below, and the uh, partially threaded screws would be where the springs are. We have a shortened screw here. That's where the uh, anti-reverse dog is, so you want to make a note of that. And our last one up top here. And we should be able to push the bridge through at this point. I also cut my hands when I uh, when I got to pull those screws out because I want to make sure that if there's any loose pieces in there that may have become disconnected, that they don't spring when I go to push this thing through. So I've got my hand cupped. And this is your bridge assembly. And uh, we've got one screw here and one screw in the bridge. Those are your yoke screws. We have our jack the yoke, the pinion gear, we have our anti-reverse spring, here's your setup for the um, anti-reverse dog, and as it turns out we didn't need to pull that spring off because there's a collar here, it's a secondary uh, spring, that's where that short screw went in, so we could have left that on there, no harm, no foul, and uh, then this would be your main gear set up here. And we'll just uh, we'll remove that. A couple of tension washers up top and just for the sensitivity in the the drag. And we have a top drag washer followed by a, a leather drag washer. That's clearly worn I don't know if these are available, but I'm going to bet that that's very close to a, uh, a washer for a Pen 155, and I will I imagine I will substitute that. I think you can 
uh, find some but not all of these pieces still but uh, certainly can for the 50H but I'm not sure of the others. Okay and then we have an eared washer which would have been the next one in and th yeah, these drag washers are shot that's probably why uh, we wound up with what we did uh, and winding up in a parts tray but uh, we'll back as we after we clean that we're going to come back we'll uh, take a look at all of these see if we can substitute drag washers there that'll fit they look like they will we'll have it all cleaned up and uh, we'll come back with the, uh, the reassembly of this and then of course we're missing the the e clip here and this is what's happening while it, while you're cranking the reel it's coming up and down so that can't be a good thing either and we should be able to just pull that off so that we can clean the stem here. And as we do that, notice that there's a little washer that's on the post. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just take that washer, I'm going to put it into the post. I'm going to put that into my parts tray, which you've seen me do with uh, all the pieces and parts as I've been disassembling that. Okay, I'm going to start the cleaning. I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to use an ultrasonic cleaner. And then... Uh, Cons uh, out in Arizona sent me a, a toothbrush. We're going to try that on some of the main gear stuff. And uh, hopefully what we'll do is we'll make this pretty. We know it's functional. We'll come back in and we'll find the substitute drag washers. And uh, hopefully we'll take this one fishing again. So I'm going to pause it here. I appreciate you watching. We'll be back in a little bit with the, uh, the clean pieces and parts. We'll show you how to rebuild the wheel. So I'm back, and it's uh, actually day two, and uh, we've done a little bit more since we uh, started just sending this off to get cleaned. I did remove the worm gear. In order to remove the worm gear, there's a cap that uh, sits here. You'll see it on the reinstall. There's a cap, and unfortunately the first casualty of this uh, project was the little decal. Fell off the cap. That's fine. If you want, you can put some glue back on it and hold it in. But you pull the cap out and your worm gear comes out and then you can do a thorough cleaning on the worm gear. The worm gear is held in by a little plastic grommet and you'll see during the reinstall how that uh, comes back into play. So we're going to organize our ports before we get started in putting this back together. We have uh, cleaned up pretty nicely given that uh, this one was sitting in a parts bin or at least as a parts for resale. The bridge cleaned up nicely. The bearings are turning well. The uh, main gear is good. What I had an opportunity to do before I started this was we left this video before saying that we have a good chance that the 115, or I'm sorry, the 155 Beachmaster uh, drag washer can be can replace the ones that were in there. I took a test and it sits beautifully inside the main gear. So we're going to go switch over to the HT 100s. We'll substitute them for the, uh, the washers that were in there. And uh, let's go set up a couple of these parts for reassembly then. There's three of those uh, dry washers. And there's a flat, an eared, and then there's one with a kind of a bell cap to it. That's the top one. So we're just going to put these over to the side for a moment when we put our attention there. The uh, internal parts are nice. I, I'm going to guess that they're probably stainless. They, they cleaned up beautifully. That's your yoke and your jack. There's the two springs. I'm going to leave them in the bucket. Springs tend to wander if you don't, uh, don't pay attention to them. We'll get them when the time comes. Then we have the pinion gear cleaned up nicely. The main gear cleaned up nicely. The gear shaft cleaned up well. We still have to find a um, a C-clip for the top of this one. And then we have uh, the casing and the spool. So everything cleaned up nicely. And uh, we're going to see if we can't get this guy fishing again. So I'm going to start by what you didn't see, which is the reinstall of the worm gear so that you can make a determination as to how that comes off. And we're going to start by putting some grease onto that metal gear that uh, drives off the other. Now, normally I don't put grease onto so the worm drives, especially if it's going to be used in salt water, I'll use oil. 
but the actual drive itself here came out and that's going to interface with the idler gear and for the idler gear I'm going to make sure that I have a little bit of grease on there. The idler gear is plastic, you don't need a lot of grease on it. It should be self-lubricating. But This one seats like that and we're going to take our little cap and the cap just presses in. It's kind of got a series of ridges here and you just want to press that in firmly. more leverage. There you go. So we're seated on that and again I have a decal for this so I'll come back to that uh, later and put that decal back on. This is nothing but a trim ring. This is a solid case. This case does not come apart so don't think by removing the three screws here you're going to pull a side plate off. That won't happen. You can see that I did my best with uh, steel wool to clean up the uh, metal posts here, uh, but for the most part uh, that's about uh, what you can do. We're going to oil the back of this case before we move away from that. I'm going to oil the bearing. I'm just going to let it sit there. The bearings I've already tested, they're working fine. Alright, there's a plastic hold fast for the worm gear on this side. It goes over the worm gear shaft and it sits between the two prongs on the outside. You'll hear it clip down and then you're going to notice there's a little space here just like on the, uh, the main shaft. There's a small metal washer that goes on top and then there's the C-clip or E-clip which holds all of that together. Now a lot of times it's a little tough, there's a little play in the side here, so I'm going to go ahead and put the pawl in. I took the pawl out, I cleaned that up, I'm going to put that into the line carrier here, line guide. I'm going to seat it, I'm going to put the pawl cap on, put a drop of oil in there, I'm going to oil the worm gear as well, I can do that at this point cap on. Then the cap, when I finally seat this, the cap is going to enable me to pull the worm gear this way so that I have more clearance when I go to put this E-clip on. And most of the time you can put this on with hand strength. Not that hard. Sometimes you need an assist from the pliers. But you're doing two things here. You're pulling over on the line guide to maintain that gap. I only got it halfway seated. I'm going to go grab a little pliers now just to finish the job there. there you go. And that's how that works. And then if I've seated this properly, when I turn the worm gear, I should have a line guide that's moving, which I do. So that's how you do it. So I oil these because if they're used in salt water, I think that the Grease traps the salt and the micro sands, so I don't like that, so I oil, I do not grease. Uh, if you're in fresh water, I guess you can put grease in there, you don't have that as much of a concern. Alright, we're over to the spool now. The spool gets a little bit of grease onto the drive that is going to drive the uh, idler gear. I'm going to put some onto the stud of that as well. I'm going to insert that into my case. And you can see as we're rolling this that we have a nice smooth operating reel. I think the biggest problem with this one that I saw other than the worn drags is that this was very tight, had a lot of uh, contamination inside that case. All right then, let's go build the bridge. So we have the second bearing in the back there, pre-tested, works. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to flood it. I'm going to guarantee myself that it's been a long time since that, uh, that main gear has had any attention to it and the bearing as well. Here's your main gear. We're going to put the post on first. So the post. All well, of this has been cleaned. Remember there's a little metal washer. I nested it inside of here. I'm going to go grab that post. I'm going to make sure that we get grease onto the shaft that that post is going to ride on. And this doesn't typically get the E-clip, which I still have to find until uh, after the reel is assembled. 
Okay, I'll just let's see if I can't just take that out because I do want to put a little bit of drag grease onto these drag washers. While I have this washer in my hand, it's already been checked. This has been cleaned. I used the ultrasonic. It did a nice job uh, with that. I'm going to put grease in there so that I don't forget later on. Grease the main gear. And you don't have to get it on every tooth, but uh, get it enough that it's going to, to do well. All right. Main gear is on. And we can put the three HT100 drag washers in there. I'm going to use Cal's Universal Drag Grease. I put a little bit onto the one side and I roll it in my hands to work it in. <clears throat> and then I wipe off any excess. That's drag washer one. Then we have a round washer. I'm going to use drag washer two. Do the same thing. Dab it into the drag grease. This one's an eared washer and it has the ears pinched downward. You should have noticed that when you did the original disassembly, but it goes down. Here's drag washer three. Seat that in here. And then we're going to put that cap washer on. And we'll remember that there's two small washers and retention washers. They went on top of that. So we can put those on at this point. And then we mentioned before, you can take the anti-reverse setup and put that on there right now because it's independent of the, um, the side plate. So just do yourself a favor, just hook it up now. Now on the 50H, this is not standalone. One side does hook in uh, over the uh, screw and you do have to set it in afterwards, but for now this one's fine. I'll go ahead and try and untangle my yoke screws, here, uh, springs here. They have a way of just kind of nesting together whenever given a chance. Now let's go build up the, uh, the internal side plate. Then I'm going to use my grease again. I use pen precision real grease. I want to get some on the eccentric. We have the two springs that load. One goes into each cavity. These springs are going to be under, or there's going to be a screw coming through these when we go to assemble. And get grease on both sides of the yoke. I'm going to get grease into the pinion gear or spool gear. The finished side with the rectangle points out. That accepts the shoulder of the spool and drives it. Now I can press that. Take my I'll set that to the up position. And that's our Okay, now with the bridge set, I just moved my finger up to the top here to hold pressure on that. Now I'm going to take my uh, main gear and bridge assembly and insert that. And you got a couple of things going here. You have to match to this piece coming into the hole for that small screw. There's a couple of studs on here you want to match to, and uh, you want to make sure that it's tight all around. So I think we've got that. I'm going to go ahead and start with that small bridge screw. Remember there was one short one. I'm going to put some oil onto there so that it comes out easy the next time. And I'm going to get that one just started. I want to tighten them all down. I want to make sure that I have 
allow for a little play in these until uh, they're all set. Next up then I'm going to just run my, my pin through there so that I can make sure that I've got the spring centered there. I don't want to gather that spring as I'm uh, tightening with the bridge screw. Same thing here, just get it started, feel it grip. Third one goes below. I'm going to do the same thing with the spring on this side. We're going to just use a centering pin or awl or anything you may have just to make sure that this screw goes through the spring. I've seen reels come in that have the, the spring all caught up in that screw. So that's just precautionary. Once we do that then we can come back and tighten. I like to go opposite ends and opposings, kind of northeast southwest. I've got a, a Phillips head there, but a flat bladed screwdriver works better. So let's go ahead and just finish that off. And we have the gear sleeve. And we have our adjuster. I like the sound of that, the anti reverse is working. We're in good stead there. I'm just checking the features and functions before I go put this back on. I want to make sure everything's working. Also, I want to get a little bit of grease onto the uh, free spool release jack there just because I couldn't do that in the original set up. Okay, next up then we have our little tension washer, we have our handle, I need more clearance to get that handle nut. I'm going to pull my side plate screws out at this point. I'm going to put it some, a little bit of oil because we noticed before that these things had, had uh, accumulated some uh, salt and seawater and stuff. So we'll make sure that that uh, sits okay. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera off for a moment and go get that E-clip and then I'll be back. Okay, so I guess for the exciting conclusion then, we have the handle on, handle nut goes on. And we had that missing E-clip. I found one. I can guarantee you it's not Daiwa, but I found one that will work. That's the important thing. And these are fairly standard. You can generally get these at hardware stores. If you want to buy a bag of them, I have a bag of um, multiple size ones. But generally, you figure if you can get it like that, then the uh, dimension is going to be close enough to hold that. There's no stress on this to speak of. But somehow, somewhere along the line, somebody who did this reel in the past omitted that clip. Now you won't have the bouncing that we had coming in and out uh, when we first got this reel. All right, cap goes on then. If we can align the hole, a little bit, a little bit of a gain here. But there we go. Tie down. The only thing left in my parts tray then are the three old drag washers and that decal. I'll probably take the time to go get some glue and put the decal back on. Otherwise there's really nothing that's identifying this as a Daiwa wheel. There we go. Tie down the screws in. Give it a turn. It's all working nicely. Thank you very much. Oops. All right. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of grease onto the shaft of the spool on this side. We already did that on the other. Now we can mate these up. Now that went on nicely. Three side plate screws. We've oiled these. That should help prevent uh, future corrosion. Next guy take this apart. Hopefully uh, will we'll be a little bit sooner than the last time this reel was serviced, which is who knows how long. It's probably the reason why this thing wound up in the bin, but uh, that's okay. Uh, this is going to fish another day, I'm sure of it. It doesn't have all the cosmetic appeal, but then again, this reel is a, a 30 or 40 year old reel now, so uh, you can expect some. 
and uh, quite honestly, the graphite frames and the, uh, the chromed parts on the outside seem to have held up. The only thing that uh, is worn is that uh, shield for the line guide, from the line guide itself, and that's taking the brunt of salt water. Hey, right, let's give it a spin. That one free spool. Look at that. Nice, uh, nice little reel. Let's tighten down those drag washers, make sure they're holding. Yep, that's a good substitution to have the, uh, the Pen 155 drag washers for this reel. If you need them and you can't find them, go ahead and use them. And uh, that's it. That's the Daiwa 27H. As I mentioned before, it's comparable, just a little bit smaller to the Pen 310 series. Uh, this one's got a lot of fishing left in it, especially with the new drag washers. We saw that the interior pieces, there's no compromise going on there. They're solid gearing, and uh, this one's going to be fishing for a long time to come. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank our first responders uh, for all that they're doing during the pandemic. We do appreciate everything. Our first responders, our essential personnel, our hospital or medical workers, and uh, everybody who's involved in trying to get us safe and keep us well during the pandemic. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please uh, uh, indicate that. If you want to see more of these, please subscribe. And finally, if you have a reel, whether it's a Daiwa 27H or something else and uh, you don't feel up to the repair but it needs to be serviced, well, I do that too and you can contact me through the business card at the end of this video. So with all of that, thank you very much. I appreciate you watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.